so but they would bow in worship and they would take off their crowns which were symbols of victory and conquest uh, saying that all the glory and the honor as a result of their victory came because of God much to read so we'll begin it from the beginning verse 1 if you are ready when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples he left Judea and departed again into Galilee 
and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the wall, well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he's come, he'll tell us all things. Jesus, Jesus said to her, unto her, I that speak unto, unto thee am he. he. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, your word is right by itself. And your word, Lord God, I ask that it will find place in our hearts today. Speak unto us the things that you desire to cause us to understand and to know and to be partakers. We thank you for each and every one this year. Thank you for those that are listening, oh God, by way of television. Bless, strengthen, heal, instruct, and inform. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. Now we take authority over the atmosphere, Lord, and we bind everything that would interfere for the glory of your word coming forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we refute the lies of the enemy and command by the power of Jesus, Lord, that this atmosphere be filled with the presence of God and the glory of God. We honor you and give thanks to you. Have free course with your word. Now give illumination, revelation, knowledge. As your word come forth, Lord God, for we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to talk a little about worship. 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 And according to Webster or dictionary, worship is the feeling 
or expression of reverence and admiration, in this case for God. And there are words that are similar in meaning, words like respect, reverence, admiration. So we're talking concerning the worship of the Lord, divine being, our savior, our creator. And it was placed upon my heart to talk about worship. And as I was seeking the Lord, what he wanted us to talk about today. And so he said to talk about worship. And uh, I further began to ask him how it fit in. In other words, God always gives what we need, but we want to know how and why, how it fits into our situation, our present situation, so that we can apply it and uh, better understand why God did certain things. So um, uh, he called my attention to, to worship. And uh, you, you know, the background here is, of course, the Samaritans uh, during the Assyrian uh, captivity. There were those that were left in the land and were not taken captives. And then there were some of those from Assyria came to dwell in the land. And there, so there was a mixture. And um, out of that came what the Jews call half-breed. And that, from that time uh, 700 some 22 BC they were still known and labeled as half breeds and so uh, the pure bred Jews did not want to include them in all the blessings and promises and, uh, and even up to the day that Jesus came the problem still existed. And so the Jews uh, just didn't have any dealings with them. If you notice, the woman didn't say the Samaritans have no dealings with the Jews, but it was the other way around. And uh, so obviously the Jews were a proud people. And when Jesus came along, this uh, he, he sent the disciples in town to by victuals, and as he sent them in town, to town, away, he knew that he would have this conversation with this woman of Samaria. And uh, the disciples probably would have gotten in his way of ministry had they been there. And uh, as it was, they went on, and they came back with the goods, and when they saw him talking with her, they were a little puzzled. And, um, but Jesus, I mean, I know that he always sets the right example. He's a great God, and uh, it wasn't in the mind of God what was in the mind of the Jews. The Jews um, saw themselves as special, and at the time, they didn't see how the world needed what they had. So they, uh, so when Jesus came, Jesus King of the Jews came and began to reach out to all kinds of people, showing how God really is. I love that. So um, we find here some of the things that Jesus said in his conversation uh, as he struck up a conversation to the, with the woman asking, by asking her for a drink. And... <clears throat> Um, but it goes on, gets to the point where Jesus, she asked, or he asked her, go call your husband when she and said, give me this water. And he said, go call your husband and come back. And then Jesus, in, she in turn said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, you rightly spoken. You've told the truth. You have no husband. Then he began to unfold uh, what took place in her life. And uh, so after she perceived that he was a prophet, she went on to talk about the worship where the fathers worship in this mountain, Mount Gerizim, 
which was supposed to be, according to Deuteronomy, the place of blessings. So, um, she says, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour coming. When you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father, you worship you know not what. Can you imagine worshiping and not knowing what or who they worship? But that's what happened. They were worshiping. They did not know the true Savior and the, the true God, but they were worshiping. They knew not what. And then he said, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is, he went on to, to, to say, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, the early manuscript says God is spirit. Uh, but an article is added here as it's translated God is a spirit but God is spirit. That's how it's originally written. So we have here him giving us some insight, or giving the woman and us some insight concerning worship. Uh, the Jews were instructed in the days of the early, uh, the Old Testament, as they worshiped or prayed, they would turn their faces toward Jerusalem, which was the holy city. And uh, no matter where they were, they would uh, direct their worship and their time their, and everything toward Jerusalem. And so, but the Samaritans worshiped in Mount Gerizim. And so there was this division here. So she says, our fathers worship in this mountain. And you say Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So now here Jesus was giving her some insight about God and what he requires, said, the, one, the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers shall neither in this mountain nor Jerusalem worship the Father. And so he says, he says that the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Then he said, the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now what a powerful statement. God seeks our worship. And then he says, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Um, I want to share two or three things that um, happens or the benefits of worship. And But before I do, I want to take it to a few scriptures briefly to remind us of the supremacy and the greatness of God. God is sovereign. God created us for his purpose and glory. So I want you to turn to the book of Revelation if you'll follow with me. Revelation chapter 4. When you visit this scene, as John was caught up in the spirit, and he heard a voice says, come up hither. So God called him up and began to show him, take him actually in the spirit in heaven to see just how, what heaven is like. These were things that also was futuristic, as he said, the things that are present, the things that are going to uh, uh, in the future as well. So that's what the, when Jesus spoke to him. But anyway, he, so he catches him up in the spirit and he began to see such a wonderful scene. Four beasts, 24 elders, they see the throne of God. And it's such an awesome sight. Everything is clear as a crystal. Such beautiful, such beauty. And then uh, around uh, 
God, obviously in the background around the throne, was like a, 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 just a rainbow of colors. So beautiful. And um, so John was just awestruck as he saw the scene. But we, we need to worship God. We are created for that purpose. Now, Revelation, as you look at Revelation, start at verse 9. He talks about the beast. Um, let me read verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man. The fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. There rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne. Now, if you up earlier in verse 4, you find that these 24 elders all had crowns. And how many know you don't get a crown just because of who you are. The crowns is symbolic of some victory that they won. And so, but they would bow and worship and they would take off their crowns which were symbols of victory and conquest uh, saying that all the glory and the honor as a result of their victory came because of God. And so he says, um, verse 9, And when these, those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne. This is God. And worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. And this is verse I want you to see. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So we see that we were created for God's pleasure. And that word pleasure in the Greek means a determination. So as I thought about that, a determination. And then it also speaks of a choice, an inclination, the will. So God, in his mind, in his determination... As he was contemplating making man, he had a purpose in mind as he was determining this choice about making man. So he says, and for thy pleasure. And as I thought about that, Genesis uh, 1 says, and God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So there was a contemplation. There was, there was a determination. There was, there was in the mind of God a thought and a purpose behind that thought. You and I are purposed by God, but it's very important that we get to know our purpose, our reason for existence, right? And so... Uh, in Ephesians 4 and 5 tells us a little something as well that we can, uh, that uh, lends itself to the validity of this very thought. Ephesians 1, 
It says, verse 4, according as he has chosen us. Somebody say choice. In him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Then he goes on to say, having predestinated or predetermined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure, what? Of his will. It was the will of God. It was the purpose of God. You and I are the will of God. You and I are the purpose of God in creation. When God created us, he created us with a purpose in mind. And so we are not without purpose. And so he says, when God says, God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him, what? In spirit and in truth. He says the father seeketh such to worship him. And for his pleasure and for his purpose, we are created. So what it points out in Revelation is God's sovereign creative will is the sole reason that we came into existence. Are you hearing me? So do you, can you just reckon with me the value of understanding why we're made? God was not, as someone said, on an ego trip because he seeks someone to worship him. So I want uh, to proceed now as God was taking me through some scriptures. Uh, go on in St. Mark, the Bible says in, in, in chapter 12. Uh, in this scene, there were those that were asking Jesus questions. They thought they were difficult questions that they were asking. It was probably difficult to them. And Jesus answered every one of them so well. And so after one of the scribes came, some of the questions they asked, they, they really weren't looking for the true answer. They were testing him to see if they could catch him 